Right, but right now we're doing a muffler delete on this 350Z. As you can see, it used to have the big canister style mufflers here. We left these little resonators, uh, whatever you call them, on. And we're just taking the pipe out and adding a straight piece right here. But in the middle of doing that, I had to move the uh, Z that we're doing the roll cage for and uh, Yari's car. And then this crazy monsoon happened. And it's like so bad that in the like 30 seconds of trying to put like covers over the cars that both don't have power right now and we can't roll the windows up, we're like completely like I can wring this shirt out right now. This is like, why? Why, Texas? Why are we getting a monsoon right now? Why? Freaking horrible. How much louder it's gonna be with these on there? This is a Sony A5100. Oh, I have the A6300. Well, that's because you're 16 and you're a baller. How come I don't have one and I'm like way older than 16? I bought mine a while ago. Jeez Louise. Because I wanted to start YouTube and so for the longest time I was like, I was saving up for a camera. Mm -hmm. So all last summer I just saved up for the A6300. And then do you YouTube now like all the time? Um, I haven't in a while. Well, my computer has been broken, so I haven't been able to edit anything. I hear excuses. Everybody should YouTube. It's fun. It, I enjoy it. Yeah, see? It, he, he even has a better camera than I do. High school guy. Oh, man. All right, I really got to focus and weld this up so I can go move these cars in from the crazy monsoon. Okay, back to work. Okay, we got that exhaust all welded up on this Z. I wish I'd gotten um, a before and after sound clip for you, but I didn't. But you guys can at least hear what it sounds like now. We'll go ahead and fire it up. That is a lot louder. A lot louder? That's a lot louder, definitely on sound. I mean, you probably heard it when you started it up. Yeah, it was a ton quieter than that. Like, it was Here, give me a little rev. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so aggressive. Man, that made. I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting it either because you still have center body resonators. Uh huh. Yeah, that's crazy. That, that was like two, three thousand RPM. They must like you a lot since they got you this car. He's 16 years hey, we old. Got, we got it for a pretty good fair. We got it for a pretty good price. I know, but my mom got me a minivan for a fair price. So like, uh, yeah, that's my dad. I mean, this car is like literally sick for a 16 year old. I mean, mo most of the bodywork though, I've, I've done a lot of the, like a lot of the bodywork. So. Nice. Check this thing out. He's even got like the cooler bumper, just like that other uh, black Z that we had. Yeah, go for it. You should hear the muscle cars that come in here. Like, yeah, kids your age, they want it like so loud. It's loud. Especially the Camaros was, and Mustang. I was not expecting that at all. That's funny. <laughs> all right, another car, super loud. Why not? So we got Yari's pump out and basically we need to take the actual factory pump out of its little uh, cradle cage thing down here and we need to modify the fuel pressure uh, regulator which is this little guy right here. We need to block him off so that he no longer has the ability to regulate and then we need to drill a hole through the top of this guy right here to add a fitting. So we're gonna do those three steps uh, right now.
Okay, so I'm back over here working on this uh, fuel pump setup, and we were trying to find a bolt or something that would block off uh, the fuel exit, so that way the regulator is disabled in the tank. But the head of most of these bolts um, that would screw in there pretty good, it's a little bit too big and it doesn't allow it to go all the way back into the housing. If you see this little housing, it has to go down in there, and if it goes too far, it hangs out and doesn't fit. So. We're gonna take a trip to the hardware store and try to find a screw or bolt that doesn't get in the way. That way we can uh, block that off correctly. We'll show you guys in just a minute. I don't know why you took that corner so slow. You could floor the heck out of it. I'm so used Even to with all these puddles on the road, like we're good. I'm so used to driving a Panda's 370Z that spins tires in second gear. Basically spins them all the time. Oh yeah, okay, 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 okay. Safety first. Safety first. Okay. So busy being overly confident about my car's ability that I didn't put my seatbelt on for like two seconds. My BMW gets super mad at me. All right, on to the hardware store. Every kind of like gummy candy on the planet. Okay, we're back from the store and we got these little um, small, they're, I don't know, what do you want to call them? Like torque spits, little screw things. And can you see them? They fit into the regulator like perfect. We're going to put a little silicone on them and just run them in tight. And it just, you know, blocks the outlet permanently so it can't internally regulate anymore. I'll show you real quick. Okay, I got this thing ready right here, and I already got a little bit of silicone out on this towel. I'm just gonna run a little bit on there. And then, um, I mean, that's kind of a lot, but take my regulator and go ahead and install it. And it just screws in pretty much flush. and then stops. You don't have to rail it in like super tight, just get it in there till it's snug. And uh, once the silicone dries, it kind of keeps it from backing out or doing anything anyway. And it will seal it from anything coming out there. I know it's gonna be really hard for you to see this, but that's kind of the gist. If you have anything like sticking out too far here, it won't seat all the way into the pump housing. So anyway, that's kind of the best solution I found. You know, sometimes I've taken and you can like actually weld these over or do some other things, but just a little screw and some silicone for one dollar at Home Depot. I'm not real mad at that. So, okay, let's go ahead and install this back into the housing. Okay, you already went ahead and got this uh, Grams pump here. It's probably fancier than I would have done, but you know, it's his car, and it is a super nice pump, so why not? I can't remember the actual size, but it's very, very similar to like your typical Walbro. Uh, it's a 250 uh, or 265 LPH. Hold on, focus, focus. Yeah, it's good enough. Adequate for what we're doing for sure. Um, maybe if you're going ethanol, put a bigger one, like 300 and something, but this is totally fine for everything we're doing. So you'll notice like right off the jump when you guys do a pump install, that usually aftermarket pumps are slightly longer. This one's actually very, very close in size, like nearly identical. So. I guess with this fancy pump, we're not going to have to do much modification, but a lot of times on the regular Walbro, it's like a hair longer, and you have to take the rubber like isolator from the top and move it so it can go farther up into the housing, but that's really the only change. I guess, uh, I guess Grams gets points because this thing's literally identical, so like, we're pretty happy with that. 
never, I never seen that before. Okay, we went ahead and moved the little top strainer piece. Uh, well, it's just a seal O-ring from this one over to the new pump and uh, put a little bit of uh, WD-40 so it can go into the housing. So now we can slide this back into its little cradle, just like so. It just slides back in. Anyway, the rest of, the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory because you've obviously taken it apart at this point. You guys should be able to figure out how it goes back together. We have the pump installed. We have the regulator blocked off. So as of right now, if we put this back in the car, it would just make full fuel pressure all the time, which wouldn't be ideal, which is why we have to add a return line and regulate it. So let's go to the next step. I don't, let's try to go straight. There we go. Yeah. But basically, this will go in and just seal up on um, on its own little like rubber piece right here. So make sure to not over drill this and make sure to tap it correctly. Just take your time and do it slow. Okay, I'm in the back of Yari's car and he got the fuel line installed. I was just going to show you really quick. The pump's back. Uh, and the housings back in everything's tightened and finished off. We went ahead and pushed on our push lock hose here and uh, Tightened down our 90 now the way we did this with the straight coming out of here It might be more ideal if you did a 90 coming directly out and then a straight line or another 90 um, Just because this does sit like a hair high for the cover We're just gonna put like you know a little spacer washer or something so that way it doesn't sit down on it um, You could trim the cover, but Realistically, probably the better way to do it is just to come straight out here with the 90, but it is all just kind of a tight fit, and there's pros and cons of kind of doing it both ways. Uh, this line actually flows really nice this way, so I'm okay with kind of how we did it. All right, let me show you the rest. So basically, we just stuck the line under the car, and then we're going to go under the car now and show you that. <laughs> You can see where the fuel line uh, comes down, just kind of between the body and the tank. I like to run it over anything that will keep it from falling down, you know. So I ran it over this uh, uh, e-brake cable, and then I like to run the line as close to the factory lines as possible. This is basically brake line and fuel line, and um, you can use you can get these isolators at like Home Depot. They're called like a P-clamp isolator. But basically, you just put them up like that, you can screw them in. And then I usually, for an added precaution, will take and zip tie um, between my other clamps, just for added security, all the way up along here. And I basically route this just the way that the factory fuel lines would go anyway. I'm going to isolate this, and then I'll show you, and we'll go on to the next step. So we've been running the lines. We got these isolators right here. And we went a little bit closer by putting zip ties little brake lines so I would keep it close to the body and as far up below the frame as possible so that if I do bottom out unfortunately we will not mess up my fuel and yeah we're gonna keep going we're gonna go down now we're gonna see if we can route it up to the top find a nice cool place for it okay so we got the fuel line up in the engine bay and basically this is the regulator that we picked out and we'll have to make some kind of mounting bracket for it or something to go here but essentially, we're just going to try to keep it the fuel line out of the way of everything as much as possible, shorten it to length, and go ahead and push it onto the, the push lock style fitting there. So we'll just push that one on, mount it, and then this will be ready to run over to the fuel, uh, the rest of the fuel system. Okay, uh, we're going to work on mounting that fuel pressure regulator, but in the meantime, Yari's going to go ahead and put his new fuel uh, rail on and we're going to probably go dig out his new 1000cc injectors real quick and slam them all in at the same time and then uh, we'll see you guys back in just a minute. Okay, 
So interrupt this project because we gotta stop and tune a Z, but that's life, right? So this particular Z has lots of carbon fiber on it and uh, has a bunch of good exhaust mods and it has up rev and arc and uh, looks like it has a Nismo intake on it and it has big Volk wheels and has some super cool um, Brembo uh, brakes which don't matter for dynoing at all but and uh, you know whatever that is probably 210 a 210 torque so we got a little bit of work to do he changed the exhaust and uh, we haven't retuned for that yet so he probably lost horsepower from stock honestly but we'll go ahead and fix that up right now and see what we can make Alright, check it out. You can see like we made uh, about six horsepower and about ten foot pounds of torque just from like a quick like little 30 minute tune session. So um, it was already on a like a tune map from Uprev and all he did was change the exhaust in the mid pipe. So it just needed a little cleaning up and it actually made just a hair more. So we're happy with that. We're probably gonna do like an intake and a few other things and then get it back on the dyno again. See if we can get this thing like up over maybe like 250, 255, maybe 260, something like that. So, more mods coming in the future, but a uh, pretty good stopping point for today, so. All right, so, we're still working on this fuel rail. We got these uh, fuel injector adapters, just like the ones we did on that Z a while back, but they make it so that your um, stock fuel injector clip basically can plug directly into your new injector, which is awesome. Looks hella clean. And looks really, really clean. So, that wire truck plate's gonna be clean. The cool thing is that with the new fuel rail, it does hide the wiring, which looks super nice. And the fuel's gonna come out of here, over, and uh, meet up with the stock uh, fuel line, which I don't know where it was. It's like hiding under here. The stock fuel line will just be here. And this, can you guys see this hole? Right here will be the exit, and that will come straight over into our regulator. And then the regulator just goes down and returns to the tank. So after we secured that line under the car, we basically just brought it up here, into the regulator, over to the rail. And right here on this little fitting, we're gonna pull this out and put the fuel pressure gauge, and then it'll be adjustable right here on the top. And then this is vacuum reference. So one of the biggest difference in the tank versus uh, regulating in the tank versus regulating out here externally is we can use boost and vacuum to raise and lower the fuel pressure. So when it's in vacuum, the fuel pressure is lower. And as it gets into boost, it starts to raise, you know, one PSI of fuel pressure for one pound of boost. So boost reference for fuel is a very, very helpful thing. All right, we're going to make this last line and finish this. And then we'll be good. Full 1,000 cc injectors installed. We'll go get some new gas, and then we'll go back on the dyno. Another episode of, like, After Hours at Gearheads right now. Round two. Round two. This time no crazy muscle cars. Dang, nice. You got that. Follow. I love push lock hose. Hey, I made